you know, we look at Texas politics since the 1970s. One of the issues that has severely uh, influenced Texas politics was the Sharpstown scandal of 1971. Frank Sharp, who was a Houston real estate developer, uh, was found guilty of, uh, by the Securities and Exchange Commission of bribing many Texas politicians. And so this started a Throw the Rascals Out campaign. Uh, they wanted to get rid of some of these corrupt influential politicians in Texas politics. This was led by a group known as the Dirty 30 and the Texas Legislator. These were a group of about 30 politicians who did everything they could to try to uh, buck the system and challenge the power that these corrupt politicians had over Texas politics. And in the 1972 election, you see some challenges to the uh, entrenched system from Mexican-American voters who found power in a group called La Raza Unida. Uh, the Raza Unida party ran Ramsey Muniz as governor. He wasn't successful, but this showed uh, to many politicians how influential the Mexican-American vote had become. Also, women ran a candidate named, uh, the, the woman's movement ran a candidate named Sissy Farenthal, uh, who was a reform-minded candidate, but again, she was not successful. Instead, there was a reform-minded governor named Dolph Frisco, uh, who became governor. He was elected in 72. And Briscoe oversaw uh, some uh, attempts at changing the Texas Constitution, revising it so that it wouldn't be so uh, uh, old-fashioned and uh, conservative, uh, but that did not uh, meet voter approval. There were efforts at redistricting to try to uh, change the power base so that Mexican-American and African-American voters would have more power at the polls. And also there was a group called the Killer Bees. Uh, some of these were Dirty 30 politicians. They were reformers who were trying to change uh, the way the political system in Texas was running. There were also people outside of politics. Marvin Zindler, a newspaper reporter and television show investigative reporter, who in 1973 investigated the so-called chicken ranch in LaGrange, Texas. This was a brothel, a house of prostitution that was allowed to exist, uh, and local police and state police and uh, politicians just kind of ignored it. In fact, many of them often went there. And uh, when Zindler exposed that this illegal operation was going on under the nose of people in, in uh, Austin, it brought a lot of embarrassment to the state, and then the state moved in to shut it down. For Texas women in national politics, Sarah Weddington, a Dallas attorney, uh, argued the Roe versus Wade decision uh, successfully. Uh, also, Barbara Jordan uh, made quite a name for herself during the Watergate hearings where President Richard Nixon was being impeached for crimes uh, including the Watergate break-in and other crimes against uh, spying and political corruption in Washington. Police brutality also uh, became quite an issue in the 1970s uh, throughout the decade. One example was Carl Hampton, who was an African American activist. Uh, he worked for, he led the new Black Panther Party in Houston, and uh, he was shot down by police in 1971. Uh, there was also a riot uh, on the Texas State University, uh, a so called riot on the Texas State University dorms. Uh, when the police raided the dorms because of some commotion that was going on. Uh, some policemen were shot. Uh, one was killed during that incident. Uh, but it was by another policeman, not by the African-American students who were basically unarmed. And also the uh, mysterious death surrounding uh, Joe Campos Torres, uh, which started the Moody Park riots in Houston. Uh, Campos Torres was arrested. Vietnam War vet was arrested by police and was found uh, floating in Buffalo Bayou. Uh, in places like Dallas and other instances around the state, uh, along with uh, Carl Hampton uh, and the way minorities were being treated in general, brought a lot of attention and some reforms to the way police were treating minority suspects. Also, school financing in 1971, one of the poorest districts in the state of Texas, the Edgewood District, uh, there was a case that came out of there, Rodriguez versus SAISD. Uh, this was a question of how school finances were allocated, uh, basically by property tax. So if you were in a poor district 
your school wasn't going to get as much funding as somebody in a wealthy district. So this translated into how students were being taught and how teachers were paid. And was it fair? Uh, just because by accident of birth you were born in the wrong place that you should get a bad education. And that's what that issue uh, raised. As far as the Texas Republican Party was concerned, uh, some of these reform movements helped it win some elections. And in 1978, in 1986, the first Republican governor is elected to Texas since Reconstruction. This is Bill Clemens. Uh, Mark White is a Democrat who's also reform-minded, and he's elected in between uh, Clemens' two terms. Some of the issues that were raised, again, the school finance issue, uh, this is a little different version of the same case, the Rodriguez case, uh, re-emerges as Edgewood ISD versus Kirby. And again, uh, wondering about school financing. Should poor districts be given uh, less money? House Bill 72 uh, as a result of some uh, national attention on the way school children were learning or not learning, uh, however you wanted to interpret it, uh, Texas decided to reform its school system, and House Bill 72 uh, was one of the results. It's most famous for its no-pass, no-play provision. If a student was failing uh, academic courses, he or she should not be allowed to participate in extracurricular activities. And a lot of people who love football and other Texas sports didn't like this provision. In the Texas Gulf Coast region, um, after the Vietnam War, many refugees came to the Gulf Coast area between Mississippi and Texas and were involved in shrimping. Now this put them into conflict with white shrimpers and fishermen. And so the Ku Klux Klan came in and made some demonstration against the Vietnamese refugees. There was also an oil bust when the price of oil bottomed out and the Texas economy uh, suffered tremendously as a result of this. We also suffered as a result of the Challenger accident when the space shuttle Challenger exploded on takeoff in January of 1986. Uh, a lot of sadness and, uh, across the nation for sure. Uh, but also it affected Texas because uh, Manned Space Center is headquartered out of Houston. And many of the astronauts were from Houston. And it also shut down the program, the shuttle program, for a couple of years while NASA investigated. George Herbert Walker Bush, a senator from Texas, uh, becomes the vice president. He had run for president but uh, lost the nomination of the Republican Party to Ronald Reagan. Uh, and so he becomes Reagan's vice president in 1980, and later on in 1988 becomes president on his own. But he is reform-minded. His idea of uh, the uh, being conservative and yet compassionate at the same time uh, was his trademark. In 1992, the elections uh, brought in the Year of the Woman, as it's sometimes called. And this started with the election of Ann Richards over her uh, rival, West Texas oilman and rancher Clayton Williams. Uh, Clayton Williams said some things that uh, discouraged many women from voting for him, both Republican and Democrat in Texas, and so the votes went to Richards. In the 1992 presidential campaign for U.S. President, uh, Richards, Barbara Jordan, and Lena Guerrero, all of Texas, uh, made speeches at the Democratic National Convention, and so it was called sometimes the Year of the Woman. Kay Bailey Hutchinson became the U.S. Senator from Texas as well. But it was also marked by uh, some negative publicity for Texas and in Waco with the Branch Davidian Raid, when the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Division of the government uh, went in to investigate the charges of uh, sex with minors and uh, weapons hoarding going on in a religious uh, separatist cult group in Waco. And this resulted in a, a fire uh, that killed many of the Branch Davidians and uh, brought really bad light on the government as a result of it. As the 20th century drew to a close, some issues remained. One was the education issue. The Texas legislature attempted to solve the unequal distribution of public education funds with the so-called Robin Hood plan. This would allow wealthier districts to give money to poorer districts. Some people still didn't like that, and uh, the Supreme Court, the, uh, the Texas Supreme Court, has said that this is unconstitutional and they need to develop a working plan. However, the legislature still has not done so. So Robin Hood continues to be in effect. 
Also, the Hopwood case. This was the case over the University of Texas Law School. Should minorities have special provisions that allow them to get in? In set-asides, they get so many seats, uh, the rest go to Anglo students if the minorities aren't equally uh, as uh, capable uh, or as uh, likely to succeed as uh, the regular students. And this became a big issue. The Supreme Court says race still can, can still play a role in um, uh, admissions for universities, so this still hasn't been completely answered. But racism and civil rights in Texas continued throughout the uh, late 1990s. Uh, for example, the Klan marched in Vider to protest the integration of public housing. Uh, a few years later, just north of Vider, in uh, Jasper County, James Bird, an African-American man, was abducted, tied behind a truck, and drugged to his death, uh, which brought a lot of attention to racism in East Texas. And also Native Americans uh, were seeking federal recognition that had been denied them in the 1950s, and the state was responsible for them. Now the state uh, was actively encouraging them to get federal recognition again uh, for the Kickapoo, the Tigua, and the Alabama Cushata tribes. And George Walker Bush, uh, George H.W. Bush's son, was elected governor and then president of the United States in the year 2000. And this brought uh, one more uh, president, the third president from Texas in the 20th century. Finally, some issues that continue into the 21st century. The school finance issue remains. Issues over redistricting and the voting power of minority groups and where they live continues to be an issue and will be for the foreseeable future. As is the economy. The economy, um, the economic recession of the uh, 2000 and above uh, started with the Exxon Bank failure. Uh, also, uh, the September 11 attacks uh, have affected the U.S. economy and society and the way we uh, conduct our daily business as well. The Space Shuttle Columbia, which disintegrated on uh, re-entry over Texas, uh, also uh, marked the beginning of the end of the space program. The space program had already uh, was already wrapping down, but uh, by the year 2011, when you have the last Space Shuttle flight, uh, you see the end of the Space Shuttle program. And what will this mean for the Texas economy? Finally, uh, you do see some booms in the oil and gas industry that's also marked by lower prices as well. And so there's some uh, booms and busts going on there that are going to continue for the foreseeable future. For minority groups and civil rights, uh, Native Americans saw their casinos closed, but they also have other civil rights issues that they're dealing with. Um, the economic impact of Hurricane Katrina's and Rita uh, both had significant minority and civil rights issues uh, and socio other socioeconomic uh, concerns, how poor people respond and are treated as a result of natural disasters. Uh, there's also immigration and border troubles that are plaguing Texas and other border states as well and the national uh, political scene. Finally, education. How do we teach and what do we teach our students in our public schools is also a political issue because uh, the State Board of Education uh, has the clout to determine what textbooks are adopted and what those textbooks say. And we saw in recent years, in 2009-2010, a series of battles uh, that were very public about how history will be taught and the role of minority groups in history in Texas education. And this has broader repercussions because Texas uh, so many books, uh, buy so many books that many of the books published in the United States in general that are for history textbooks are based upon the, what Texas wants. And so other states are concerned about these issues as well. So these are some of the issues that we're going to see continuing to crop up uh, as the nation moves on into the 21st century.